Moving on to wound packing and how we're actually going to do it. So we've come across our wound and you can see that there's actively bleeding that's coming out of it. All right, It's up in your groin so we can't put a tourniquet on. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go in and we need to apply digital pressure and find where that bleed is coming from to make sure we can stop it before we start to pack. So from here, if the wound is big enough, it's filled up, there's blood pooling around the area, we're going to open it up and we're going to scoop some of that blood out and we're physically going to be looking to see where that bleed is coming from. So essentially looking for like a little fountain spraying underneath the water, visibly having a look to see what we can find and then putting our finger directly on top of that. So right now I've got digital pressure on that artery which has stopped that bleeding momentarily. Obviously depending on the environment you're working in, it's not going to be feasible for me to sit here and keep my finger on that artery. So what I need to do is I need to start to pack that wound. So I'm keeping pressure applied to that artery. My buddy, whoever's around, the patient, I'm getting my quick clot or my hemostatic agent or just my normal gauze to start packing. If you haven't already done so, if you've pre-packaged your gauze, just making sure you've got some tears in there, that's gonna make it a lot easier to rip. Some little courtesy tabs, all right? So from there, pulling it open, keeping digital pressure on there, and we're gonna to start to pull that gauze out. Now you can rip the whole lot out and then start to pack, or you can keep it in the packet and just start pulling it out. It is gonna be in a Z fold, so it's a lot easier to pull out. So you can see it's just gonna slowly start to pull. All right, now from there, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it on the tip of my index finger, like so, and I'm gonna start replacing my fingers and leaving the gauze in that location. So keeping active pressure, on here, all right, I'm gonna grab the tip of that finger and I'm gonna slide it in and put it where my last finger was, keeping active pressure with that finger. I've replaced it, which now has that gauze. Now from here, I'm gonna start pulling that out and just follow that whole process until all that gauze is gone and that whole wound is completely packed. Keeping pressure directed in the way of where that bleed is coming from. little blue strip you see so that is allowing so when the patient goes for an x-ray they can actually see so it's a radio opaque line once they can see where the gauze is actually in there so that clot is going to start to form where that bleed is coming from so I don't actually have my finger on there anymore but when I'm replacing my finger with the gauze the pressure is directed in the way of where that bleed is coming from. Please don't try and push pressure anywhere else around that wound. We're going all the way back until that wound is completely filled up. So you can see here, there's a lot of space to fill up. We wanna make sure that whole area is nice and tight and compact. Because unfortunately, when we start to move our patient, if you put in splints on, the tissue, the muscle, that's all gonna shift, which can all affect that clot and it might cause it to blow or move, causing that patient to bleed again. So it's really important that when we're doing this packing, that we're physically and visibly looking to make sure there's no blood pooling from underneath. Right? If we can see blood pooling from underneath, that's gonna indicate that we've missed that artery and it's gonna to continue to bleed. So even though that wound is now completely full, I'm still packing around the edges there to make sure that that gauze cannot slip into those spaces around the area. Once you've done that, we're keeping active pressure on there. All right. Now, if you're happy or if you do have some other material around, so if you do have just the normal gauze, open it up. And you don't need to take the bandage out. What we can do is we can just place that straight on top and put some more pressure down there. All right. Trying to keep that pressure directed to where that wound is. Okay, well, sorry, where the bleed is coming from. And we want to hold it there for a minimum of three minutes. Okay. Now, if your patient is able and willing, we can get them to do it while we start to get our other bandages ready to wrap it up. All right, because again, we can't just sit here 
with our fingers in the wound forever. We want to be able to move our patient as well as keeping everything nice and tightly compact. All right. At that end of that three minutes, all right, if you're happy you can't see any pooling coming from underneath, we can just ever so gently just pull the sides of that wound outwards. And again, we're just making sure that we haven't missed any bleeding coming from underneath. Please, if you see active bleeding coming up from underneath, that wound is still bleeding. So we need to make sure that we go back and we rectify that problem. By just shoving more gauze on top, okay, it just means that we're applying pressure to the area. We're not applying direct pressure to where that artery is bleeding from. All right.